the Sports Vote Campaign Podcast. Invest in sports. Tuesday, November 24th, 2020. The gambling faction has been going into the press pretty heavily recently trying to make up excuses for the terrible numbers being reported by DraftKings and others. They're trying to say that this is the first or the second ending, basically in the sports gambling march. I say let's rein them out. The Sports Vote Electoral College strategy will be announced on January 20th, 2021. Again, the Sports Vote Electoral College strategy will be announced on January 20th, 2021. I understand the skeptics about the ASM model, and I understand that it may look like a Ponzi scheme from the outside and that it won't work, but I'm telling you that it will, and it will do everything that we said it'll do. And we're going to prove all of that in the upcoming Sports Vote Manifesto, which was going to be published uh, Independence Day of 2020, but the entire publishing world was turned upside down by COVID-19, so that's been delayed. But that uh, mathematical and logical proof will be forthcoming soon. There is no value creation in gambling because it's impossible. Why? Because you're just swiping the other man's dollar from the other side of the table each time taking a little bit for the house. That's a destructive spiral, negative spiral. There's no way around it. It's a math problem. There's no way to create value in that equation. It's a math problem. IP theft reminder. The law provides for triple damages or more. Transposing words is not going to do it. So keep that in mind when you look at our model and think about copying it. Regarding copies. ProTrade was the original copycat, $50 million down the drain. Fantex was the most recent copycat, about $100 million down the drain that I can identify. And then one season, which was in between those, if I believe, if I remember correctly, was $10 million gone in one season. So our proposition is sports performance investing versus all of the various gambling scams of the world that that's all the public knows about. The gambling people love to quote turnover as if that means something, doesn't mean anything. Look at the numbers in the financial statements. Look at DraftKings. It's exactly as I said it would be over the last 12 months, each quarter losing more at a faster rate. If you want to invest in the past, That's what investing in gambling is, investing in the past. Go for it. Buy the t-shirt, get the hat, go to the conferences, pimp it online, whatever. That's what you're doing, though. Don't confuse yourself. You're investing in the past. So did gasoline cars vanish when electric cars showed up? No, they did not. It's not going to be any different here. So it looks like PayPal is fully embracing the crypto gambling business. Again, if you love crypto, go for it, buy the shirt, wear the hat, go to the conferences, talk about it online, pimp it to your friends and family, whatever. Here's my question, never been answered. First time I asked this question more than 10 years ago, I still don't have an answer. What happens when the miners are turned off? So anybody have an answer for that? I'd love to hear it. Support at allsportsmarket.com. So why do I care about this? Why does it matter? I've been asked that a bunch of times. Because these activities siphon productive capital out of the economy and towards ends that do not help the broader economy, do not help the common man. That's why these things are leeches on the economy. That's why I care about it and I'm not going to stop. So complaints or not, I don't care. It is what it is. It's a non-productive use of capital in both cases. Crypto, non-productive use of capital. Gambling, non-productive use of capital. That's the reason. As far as Bitcoin spiking, well, that's just in time for the holidays. Seems like I remember last election cycle or somewhere around. It seems about the same. I didn't look at the the chart, but it feels very similar to what we had happen. Is it four years ago? I'm not sure on those dates, but it feels about there. 
stability of the dividend reserve balances. So I've been watching this for quite a while, and it, the the balances are very stable with both of the uh, balances staying about uh, $20 million regardless of the game activity. So this is something that was identified by Alper some time ago in terms of the uh, ability to earn interest and to invest those funds uh, in the future in the exempt or regulated market. And I now see that that is a, going to be a substantial amount of capital and it will grow uh, over time. And so that is an income stream for the um, the future entity that I had previously not really paid much attention to, but I can now say that after watching the model for a long period of time that those balances will be stable and that we'll be able to put that capital to work um, at interest or in investments without uh, putting the market at risk. So that's another income line for uh, the regulated or exempt all sports market. So who says that the economy has to be based on consumer spending? That the U.S. economy is about 60 to 70 percent consumer spending. I say that we flip that around. I mean, why don't we try to build an economy based on sports production? Okay, I would offer up that production is more fun than consumption anyway, no matter what you may think. It's more fun to produce than it is to consume. And I don't know how we can continue to build a country's economy on our ability to borrow and spend. I mean, that's really what's happening. That's that's what we've been basing our economy on for the last many decades, and that's not uh, sustainable. So I'm going to get into more of this later, but uh, here's an interesting story if you want to uh, look at something for fun. I'm going to put uh, more on this in the future. Edison, Thomas Edison, um, versus Westinghouse, Edison versus Westinghouse. This was the battle for the technology that basically operates the power grid, AC versus DC. Um, I'm going to explain what that means relative to ASM as we uh, move along in other podcasts and other communications. But my idea has been for a very long time that ASM would become like a utility. That's how I see it in its usefulness. And in terms of the election, which uh, as of today, Tuesday, uh, the transition is now officially underway. So regardless of what party you belong to or what you believe, uh, Joe Biden will be inaugurated on the 20th of January, 2021. I just want to point out that the ASM march towards sports performance investing is going to look exactly like this election cycle did. It's going to look like the old guard. I'm going to put Trump and gambling in the same camp because they are he owned and operated casinos. We made a video with Biff uh, Tannen from Back to the Future. So uh, that's the past. And, uh, you know, sports performance investing is the future. And I'm going to say that the gambling guys are going to look like Trump. They're going to look like they're victorious and all this noise and fanfare. And in the end, it's going to be us. So the 1950s aesthetic, um, I, I get it. I get why people are attracted to it. I mentioned this a long time ago uh, in terms of things related to ASM long before we got to this period in time, um, which I think contributed heavily to Trump being elected, the desire to get back to a, the, the good old days, so to speak, all of that. You know, I see shops here that uh, put, you know, put products out that are in that aesthetic. It's obviously something that people long for. And, you know, I, I actually get it. I do get it. But it's not a political solution in the form of voting for a human. That's not going to make anything like that happen. First of all, you can't go back. Uh, that doesn't work. But, you know, if you want to create something like that, it's not through the political operation of electing a person. Uh, our claim is that that future can be had by rebuilding sports around an investment structure, which is what all sports market is all about. Sports performance investing rather than sports gambling and the poaching of sports performance. Okay, so another claim I'm going to put out there, I think lawyers are eating and the legal system are eating about 10% of gross domestic product for no good purpose other than just robbing each other and causing misery and all sorts of garbage that's unnecessary. 10% uh, of GDP is being lost to non-productive bullshit, basically, and I plan to replace them with software. Um, the IRS can also be deleted for a 10% national VAT value-added tax. 
Apple cut their fees in half. That's very smart. That's uh, going to head off the competition. Very, very smart. Um, they can handle it. It's, it's going to just drive the revenues higher, and they have other streams now. They don't need it. So uh, good move, and that's going to stop this, uh, probably stop this march to try to go outside of their ecosystem with some of these uh, larger brands that forgot where they came from, which seems to be a human trait. Uh, allsportsmarket.live. That's just a domain name that we're parking for a future streaming service, allsportsmarket.live. Elon has put the caution flag up for SPACs. I would agree with that a thousand percent. I'm on the record already saying that before Mr. Musk did. Be careful with this this uh, setup. The longest distance between two points is a shortcut. And again, um, UK being held back by gambling. I want to explain that a little bit further. What I mean is the gambling culture, the gambling culture. Okay, and what it has done to the society. Um, California is larger than the UK is, so I would make the argument that let's not put something in the in the system here that's going to impede that. But beyond the numbers, just the financial numbers of gambling and gambling income or tax income, that's not what I mean by that. I'm talking about what it's done culturally to the to the uh, to society. So there'll be more on this later. Rumors of uh, toilet paper shortages again. I just, I don't have words for that. I, it just shows we don't learn anything, and we don't even learn anything in a very short time span. I mean, that's only, what, six months ago? Um, okay, so support load. I just want to point out that at this point in time with, uh, you can see the number of traders. It's, it's published on the stats URL that we receive almost no support load. I would say the average support load is about one email per day. That's where we are right now. Why that's important is, um, you know, scaling. What's it going to look like when uh, when we have more customers? So uh, that's a cost issue. So it's a very efficient system. Um, and then finally, what this is all about is growing the pie. You know, all of these uh, conflicts out in the world. Uh, I published something about this in, on, on the World Cup um, day. I think it was 10 years ago. You know, basically, uh, let's grow the pie. And if you grow the pie, and Alper and I talked about this actually uh, more than 10 years ago, Gr uh, grow the pie, and then there's no need to fight over all this. I, there's more than enough to go around. And that if we are um, going to uh, grow the pie, then then that will solve the problem. So that's what we're about. So thank you for your time, and uh, stay safe with your friends and your family, and I will update you again uh, next week. Bye now.